Welcome back to part three of the third developer Let's Play video for At The Gates. Uh, let's go ahead and get back into it. Uh, we were starting turn 11, and we just finished building our logger, which is good. Uh, means we can get lots and lots of timber. So we'll just go ahead and get him moving over here. Uh, we've already kind of picked out where we wanted our logger to go. Move our scout. Ooh, lots of trees. Oh, alright. So it looks like this is the end of the road on this direction. So if we head up here, we might be able to find something interesting. Uh, yeah, so our scouts are kind of running out of things to do, almost. Okay, let me switch clan. Metalworking. Okay. So we are going to need a miner soon, as we are studying, and uh, a blacksmith as well. So if we look at who we've got, Olfert, uh, he likes to eat. Fairmon, we've talked about, he kind of sucks. Uh, sucks. Sorry, Fairmon. You understand. Uh, and Adelfried, aggressive and belligerent. <laughs> okay. Uh... <laughs> I think uh, Faramond might be our our fellow of choice because uh, he's bad at discovery. He doesn't want to learn anything and he doesn't want to listen to anybody. So if we just send him to, uh, it may not be a salt mine, but if it's an iron mine, that works just as well. Okay. Settlement is idle. All right, now we need to train somebody. Get on that. So we just finished that. Uh, hunter, miners in two turns. So, okay. So this is kind of one of those points where uh, we've been stocking up on some uh, research and we need to decide uh, some of the things that we want to do in the meantime. Uh, so we have a surveyor, so that's in pretty good shape. Uh, a wood collector might be nice, but that will cost us our one tool that we need for our um, for a miner, but we do have some coal to sell, actually, so that's not the end of the world. Uh, so two turns until miners. You know, I think I will just go ahead and do that. Yeah, wood collector. So he's set for that. Um, I don't think we're going to keep our wood collector around for ever. So uh, it's probably safe to uh, kind of banish our, our our dangerous friend Adelfried to that profession in the meantime, because we'll we'll go ahead and do something else with him uh, after that. Because uh, we're gonna have a logger here, it's gonna be producing a lot of timber for us. Uh, so we don't need a wood wood collector forever. Uh, I think we are good to proceed to the next turn. Nope. All one is back to boogieing. Just, just gotta dance. Just gotta. Oh, shoot. Close to the Franks is an important matter to discuss. Uh oh. Oh, oh, jeez. All right. Well, <laughs> seems uh, okay. I forgot to, I forgot to stay away uh, from the areas that he had. Uh, asked us to stay away from uh, and we agreed to um, ooh okay uh, what was the area again okay yeah we can we can do that we can do that I'm I'm, I'm sorry Clovis I'm sorry Clovis all right ooh, yeah <laughs> Okay, so uh, you know it's a it's a good example of um, the diplomatic system in action. Kind of some of the things that we've been working on lately, where uh, other leaders will pay attention to what you've said, what's happened in the world, and um, they'll they'll hold you to that. Uh, if you say you're going to stay away from their borders and you don't, they'll uh, they'll you know call you out on that. 
Uh, and, and that's going to be true certainly for a lot of other um, elements of the game as well. So uh, if you promise to work with somebody or, uh, you know, kind of shun another leader, uh, if you promise to work uh, economically uh, with somebody and, and trade resources, they'll remember that. They'll remember if you said something bad about one of their enemies or one of their friends, whatnot. You know, uh, diplomatic memory is going to be something very important for the AI leaders in At The Gates. And uh, it, it's really something that just takes a lot of time uh, and you have to build up step by step. So uh, to make it better, uh, my approach is basically playing the game a lot. Uh, seeing what works, what doesn't, uh, what people are saying, and uh, fixing things as I go, and, and adding things. And if I say, oh, you know, it would be really interesting if uh, Clovis said this now. Uh, you can only get to that if you are actually playing the game and experiencing those sorts of situations. So uh, that's kind of our approach diplomatically. It's going to be a, a really tough, lengthy process, but... Uh, you know, it's, it's really tough to do diplomacy in games like these, so um, I think that's kind of the approach you have to take. It's not something that uh, anybody's really, really nailed yet, and uh, it, it takes some work, takes some patience. So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how it turns out, though. It's, it's already pretty interesting. A um, lot more we want to do with it, so uh, hopefully it ends up a, uh, a lot better than, than we've been able to show off already. Okay, clans are idle all. Hey, look at that. Found some iron. Yes, that's going to be very handy. We can probably send our miner there. And uh, let's see. Okay, so our surveyor can reach this uh, deposit up here. We haven't uh, seen it yet, but we know it's there. Uh, we also have another plant here. Uh, starting to get cold though, late September trees are starting to turn. Uh, I'm just going to play it safe. I'm going to stay inside our borders. Okay, so we promise not to head down this direction. So we're, we're going to hold to that this time. <laughs> we are trustworthy. I'm sorry, Clovis. I didn't mean to. So as long as we get out this turn. Okay. Oh, that nice red hue and everything is just lovely. And uh, we'll sneak out of here. Okay. Is it caravan? Yes. Show me the caravan. Okay, so they have four horses for sale and horses. Horse caravan. Timber. It's 20 additional timber for sale. That's nice. Okay. Well, one thing we can definitely do is sell our coal. So I'm going to sell that. I'm going to show us here. Make the screen actually a little bit more readable. <sighs> okay, we're down to two tools because of our woodkeeper. So we definitely need at least one more for our miner. So I'm going to buy one. And how much more wealth do we, or treasure do we have? 4.5? Uh, good amount of honey to sell, but we're going to probably start eating that shortly. This is too much to weapons. We're, we're going really risky here on the weapons. Uh, we're going a very economic heavy strategy and hoping that uh, Attila doesn't show up with an army or something. It's always possible he does and our game will end in a hurry. Uh, but we're, we're banking on that not being the case. Okay, so we have some iron. We can start getting some tools online from that, thankfully. And we kind of want some cloth. Oh, it's four each, though. Four each. We want to get that beekeeper. It's going to be so expensive. All right, well. Uh, I'm going to buy a parchment instead. So one thing that's nice about parchment is uh, you can you can spend a parchment to basically get a free level for one of your clans. Uh, if you train it in a particular discipline, something I haven't showed off yet, but I, I probably will here in this playtest, um, you can switch somebody over to a profession uh, up to level two. You can spend a turn and a parchment and like 
somebody that just doesn't have a discipline at all, you could give them, uh, get them up to level two in metalworking and then train them as a blacksmith or something. And that saves you a turn. So uh, it's not always uh, useful, but a lot of times it is, um, especially when you're trying to line things up perfectly with your, uh, with your studying and your training. Uh, it can it can come in handy, so that that may be something that uh, pans out for us here in a bit. Hopefully, um, it's the end of the year now. It's late September. Uh, the next caravan will show up in late March, I believe, and by then, hopefully, we'll have we'll have more coal, we'll have uh, more honey, uh, we'll we'll have our tools online, so we'll have some stuff that we can uh, kind of use to uh, sell off, get some of the cloth that we need to get our our uh, beekeepers going. Um, so. That's it for this turn, though. All right. We can now train miners. That's what I like to see. Cleanse our idol. Okay. Let's get a logging camp going. Two turns, and then that will earn us six timber per turn, which is going to be very nice. Okay, so you can see oops, tool tip. Uh, our food is not in great shape. Uh, we're getting close to running out here, but uh, we're going to be able to start eating our honey here. As you can see, uh, one honey is automatically turned into two food if the tribe is starving. So uh, we will be starving, I think, next turn. Oop, maybe, maybe not. Uh, we have our hunter down here who's figuring out what this herd of animals is. Uh, and then we can start eating them. Um, but we can also eat our honey if, if need be. Uh, so we're not going to starve. It looks, it looks bad, but... Uh, We've kind of uh, mitigated that uh, thanks to our apiary here. Okay, so we got a wood collector here. Uh, so we can get even more wood. Uh, let's see, the best place to get wood might be just right next to us because uh, the lung camp here is going to collect wood from the adjacent tiles as well as the tile it's built on, so these six. Uh, but it won't get this one. Um, so if we go ahead and send our wood collector here, he can start collecting that timber, and then uh, we can have it for our own. All right, so Rude, uh, he's done over here. We're going to kind of give Clovis some distance because we don't want him to uh, lose his mind and declare us as, like, you know, a mortal enemy. Oop. All right, so we found some bandits here. Gonna wanna give them a good berth because our scouts are not uh, great at defending themselves. All right, this is like a rough terrain over here. There's good food though, berries, deer, and honey. So you can, uh, you can see some of the resources by default. So um, some of the resources are uh, shrouded are not revealed, like this plant, this mineral, you know, some of the stuff that was in our borders. Uh, some of them are, like honey is always visible, uh, beehives, uh, berries are always visible, uh, deer sometimes visible, sometimes um, if you uh, survey or identify a herd of animals like we're doing down here, sometimes it turns out to be deer, but a lot of times they are also visible. So there's a good amount of food over here, but of course there's also bandits, so we have to kind of be careful in that area. Vermont kind of sucks. Okay. All right, what did we just finish again here? I always lose my train of thought. Miner. Okay, yes, that's right. Miner. Vermont. Done. Okay. Miner. Oops. Click on the actual thing. All right, so Vermont will be a miner instead, instead of sucking. He'll be a good miner. He'll be... It'll be our miner. And that's it for this turn. We've identified a herd of horses. Okay, so as you can see here on our resources panel on the left, we uh, have run out of food. However, we are producing it. Uh, you can see we're producing food from our honey supply. We have 20 in our stockpile. Unfortunately, our honey has gone offline for the season because it is winter and uh, bees don't produce as much honey in the winter and we want to keep our apiaries up and running instead of just obliterating them. So you can see this little icon here that says it's offline. Uh, if we were really desperate, we could uh, have a gatherer 
come over here and actually steal the honey from the bees. Uh, bees would not be happy. Bees would be dead. Um, but we could eat. So better bees dead than us dead. Uh, preferably neither dead, which is kind of where we are. And we can actually tell our hunter here to forage, uh, or particularly forage safely, uh, which is something we can show off now. So they can get rolling there. And let's see, we have our scout here. And let's see, what do we want to do with our scout? I may go ahead and actually just send the scout right back into the settlement and have it uh, return. So if we go back into the settlement, we can see uh, Rude is in here and then we can retrain Rude in a different profession. Uh, and that can come in handy. Um, you don't have a lot of clans, so you have to be careful about how you use them. Okay, clans are idle, forage. We don't need to worry about foraging safely because we're in our borders, so we'll just go ahead and then chop up those trees. All right, this alrim. You know, I think I'm gonna push my luck here. So this is a good example of how the uh, the game can kind of tempt you into situations where you might uh, not do something great. So you can see all these red boxes here. That means if we end our tile there, uh, we won't have enough supply and we'll take damage. Uh, our supply is critical. Uh, we kind of burn through our supply surplus, our supply uh, reserve. And um, if we end our tile or end our turn on a tile that has one of these red boxes, then we're going to take damage. Uh, but if we don't, then we won't. So, for example, the berries here, you, uh, this this uh, fertile tile here. So, um, if we can find something that isn't, uh, you know, trees or a hill, basically uh, up north here, uh, we can we will be able to avoid damage. I want to keep moving because I'm I like to play aggressive. I'm uh, especially with the scouts. Uh, he's a uh, you know he's curious. He wants to go out there. He wants to explore. So even if we even if he does take damage, we can always retrain him as something like a lower keeper. Uh, or a bard or whatnot, and even if he's taking a little bit of damage, that won't really hurt his ability to perform his duties. Um, if we wanted to retrain him as an archer or something, that would be a bigger deal, but whatever. We're going for it. Yes! Okay, so it paid off. You can see, uh, you know, all of our red boxes are down here, where we were, in the trees, but there aren't trees up here, so we can continue moving. Uh, I like to follow the hills because you can see a little bit further on top of hills. Okay, I'd move here, but yeah, not gonna, not gonna go that far. And that should be it for this turn. So we have a nice little uh, forested area over here. Oh my goodness! What the heck is that? What? What? Vast field of barley. No kidding. That is a lot of barley. Whoa, boy. Okay, so barley barley is nice because uh, barley is something that you can uh, make alcohol out of uh, very easily and produce a lot of that. Um, and alcohol is great. You can sell it. You can use it to uh, train uh, professions that produce fame. You can use it to appoint apprentices, to structures. There's a lot of things you can do with it. It's very good. So a vast field of barley, that is that is a big deal. Maybe we should have surveyed the, that first. Too late now, I guess. Okay. Uh, all right. So anyways, we have our friend here, which is our surveyor, and Let's see, it's starting to get cold up here. Um, we could send our surveyor off to survey this mineral, but you can see from the boxes uh, outside our borders, we would take some damage for doing that. So I think I'm just gonna play safe and identify the one that we already know about inside our borders under the lung camp. Miner, build the iron mine. Okay, and on uh, another 
you know it's it's cold it's a the tiles everything is cold now so when uh when tiles become cold they produce less supply uh they don't produce food so like for example our, uh, our apiary here uh because it's cold um stops producing honey if we had a farm here on the barley it would stop producing barley that sort of thing um but uh, there's just still just enough food here on the cold, fertile, and cold, dry tiles that we can we can keep our supply. We can find enough uh, things to scrounge for and not take damage. Okay. All right. So settlement is idle. So we just finished. What did we just finish? I was to pay attention to these. Might need to move those. Beekeeper. Okay. So beekeeper probably not super useful yet. Uh, we need a lot more cloth before we can pull that off. What can we do right now? Not a whole lot, unfortunately, because of our tool situation. So actually, that reminds me, we should go and start studying our way up to blacksmith for sure, because we need to start making use of this iron my goodness fortunately we have some uh, timber coming in now we have uh, this guy he's producing a decent amount of timber and uh, our logging camp so six from that and then five each turn from the from the wood collector so 11 per turn so that's in that's what we like to see here our miner isn't going to be able to build the iron mine just yet but mm, a couple turns so it's tough to line things up perfectly. If you're uh, if you're a perfectionist, you can make it work out, but uh, sometimes it's a little bit tricky. Okay. All right. Someone's idle. This is a tough one. Okay. So we're gonna keep that here. We could move. Yeah. I think I may go ahead and pack up. So I can move my settlement. I'll move it uh, one tile a little bit further to the west, uh, and then we can get some of these more. We can get some more of these trees uh, without losing anything over here on the for what we already have. So prevents us from actually training anything this turn, but so goes. Okay, so I think this is the tile that we want. Yep. Okay. So we move there. Identify, deposit. Can't build our iron mine just yet. It's unfortunate, so we'll skip a turn. Barley is very cold. Okay, our scout. Can keep going though. All right, well, looks like that's the end of the road. And uh, we'll go ahead and proceed onward. Looks like we're pretty far north, so this is uh, a little cold, this area here. All right. So uh, we'll go ahead and uh, unpack. Okay. And then we can start training a blacksmith. Which is something that will become in handy here because we really need some tools. We are completely out of tools, so Olford's probably our best bet. Everybody's going to take four turns. Uh, these two already have uh, disciplines, so Olford makes the most sense. Lands are idle. We have our wood collector here. We don't want to get in the way of our logging camp particularly. So I think I may just go ahead and go down to here. Can't build our iron mine just yet. One more turn. Ooh, hurts, hurts. Okay, so things are starting to freeze over here. You can see the ice is starting to come in. We have some uh, new art for the ice. Um, we're gonna have to encamp this turn. There's no way around that. There's nothing, everything is frozen over. Okay, so we got some. We have our blacksmiths online now. That is good to see. And the question is, what to do next? Uh, because we 
need to Let's see we could do an ale maker wine maker probably makes the most sense yeah I think I'm gonna do wine maker here because uh, wine makers we can start making alcohol from honey uh, which we certainly have plenty of and then we can do bards which produce fame from alcohol and fame will get us more clans and that is a very good thing because uh, as you can see uh, we're kind of running a little bit low and the turn Clovis of the Franks has an important matter to discuss okay what's up Clovis Those wretched bandits all right well that's that's good at least Clovis has uh, forgiven us a little bit so let's let's go ahead and agree to that uh, don't want Clovis to upset at us okay you've received information about several times okay so Clovis has found some bandits to his west so we uh, we told him about the bandits that we know um, which is probably these guys I think is it for now right now uh, and then Clovis told us about what's going on over here so let's say you know it's a that's a decent deal I mean it's not uh, something that affects us particularly much but it could you know depending on the situation so it's it's a good friendly gesture and it's it's good because we we kind of screwed up and uh, uh, broke our promise to Clovis so if we can find a way to uh, make it up to him that's a good thing so where it seems we're back in good graces with him okay clans are idle all right go ahead and move here get some more timber from that forest all right iron mine yes let's get on it and our scout over here okay we should probably just get over this direction as fast as we can fortunately it's winter so it's not going to be particularly quick cleanse our idol okay so probably need to encamp here red boxes and all Aha, okay, so we just discovered a vast stone deposit. Oh my goodness, that that's pretty good. Uh, shoo. And we already built a logging camp here. That is rough, my goodness. Okay, um, so if we go over to the caravan screen, you can see, see more uh, stone over here on the right. Uh, one of sold, so it's not it's not a whole lot, but if um, we can build a structure on it, we can we can produce a lot of stone. I think it's something like I don't know five or six or seven, something like that. So that's that's a lot of treasure. We could sell all that. We could buy whatever we wanted. Uh, we can't build a structure there though, because we have a logging camp there. But we can send our digger there. To start digging up all of that lovely lovely stone uh, but I don't think we should quite yet because we're digging up a lot of coal which we can also sell for some money so it's it's tough it's not like uh, something where you can very clearly say what the best move is um, I think I'm gonna sit tight for now maybe I should build another digger maybe I should I, st I just need I need one more tool so we have blacksmiths two turns so close so close so many things to do and we just uh, we also just um, finished winemakers which we can start making honey into wine so many things to do can't do it all can't do it all okay so we have our surveyor here now that is able to start uh, identifying a different deposit what is the best way to go here I'm wondering okay so I can reach either of these this turn the only problem is that there is that bandit camp up there um, I think I'm gonna go big I'm gonna see what that mineral is it might be something like gold or gems uh, and uh, that could be that could be something that changes our game. Um, 
The vast stone certainly helps as well. Uh, but, you know, you never know. Alright, that's probably it for uh, part three of this video. Uh, we'll continue it here in a little bit, so thanks again.